guys and welcome to an invert update where today we're going to be focusing on my isopods since they're getting upgrades. The only species not to get an upgrade are my giant orange ones just because I'm pretty happy with the size enclosure I have at the moment for them and I'm still trying to build up their numbers. But yeah as I do this I figured I will tell you what I'm doing, I will give my opinion on the species I keep, what ones I would recommend to you, but let me know below what is your favourite species of isopod and why and what would you recommend me keeping and in general if you have inverts what ones do you keep I'd love to know but before we begin I do just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video Royal Match Royal Match is a match three puzzle mobile game where you can help the king build and renovate his castle to its former glory. Now the game is completely free and it does not require internet to play. And the thing I like about this game is there are no in-game ads because they do my head in. <laughs> so you can just chill, unwind and match up the colors. So if you wanna relax, play a game for free and rebuild King Robert's castle, then click the link in the description below or scan the QR code and download royal match today. But yeah, let's start off with my dairy cows now. They were in need of an upgrade for sure. I believe I started off with maybe 25 of these and now there's probably hundreds. If you want a good beginner isopod that are visually interesting, easy to spot and easy to care for and breed, then definitely dairy cows are for you. So I decided to move them into this 30 litre box. I like to mix a blend of soil, bark chips, rotten wood, moss and leaves leaves this seems to work pretty well with them. Anyway it's a bit difficult to manually remove each one of these isopods into the new enclosure. I did try to take out any of the bigger pieces in the tank um, because a lot of them tend to hide on them like this seed pod and I actually found an all white or yellow dairy cow. I'm not sure if this is rare or anything but it's kind of cool because usually even the babies have some darker spots on them so to find one that was pretty much clear of all the markings I thought that was quite cool. But yeah, I pretty much had to tip these in and move around the dirt, but they were absolutely fine. They're a pretty hardy species. I then went on to add in some more leaf litter because these guys go through leaves pretty quickly. I like to offer them a variety of foods. So as I said, they have rotting wood, their leaves. I'll also add cuttlefish bone in here. And I do add Arcadia's insect fuel and sometimes custodian fuel. It really depends what I have on hand. But this particular thing is insect fuel that I'm adding. And it starts off powdery and technically they can eat it like that. But if you add water, it kind of rehydrates it. Um, and they seem to love it. I've also found that they will eat bee pollen. They go wild for that. They'll eat a range of dead insects and even freeze dried sprats. But yeah, as you can see, they are doing very well, breeding well. They're definitely a cool species to keep. Next, we have two species in the same size tanks that will be upgraded. Now this size tank is kind of what I start them off in, especially if I have a small species or um, just a small number of individuals. But once established, I will upgrade them. So let's look at the Panda King. So these guys had a spider living in their enclosure and I could never get it, but today I finally did. Basically every now and again, it would catch one of my isopods and eat it. Um, it's really annoying because these actually cost me five pounds each. So that's a pretty expensive meal for a spider. But yeah, like the dairy cows, I made up the tank with a range of substrates. One of the reasons I wanted to upgrade them is I felt like their tank would dry out fairly quickly as it wasn't very big and maybe I had too much ventilation, but also we have the aircon running at the moment, which can be particularly drying. So to make sure this just doesn't happen because I'd hate to lose all my isopods, I figured I would give them more room and deeper substrate and this should help avoid that issue. Now I was really surprised when I went to move them and I found a heap of like little isopod balls. Uh, these guys curl up into balls, but I did not expect to see so many. Like similar to rubber duckies, these guys don't breed as quickly as other species. And since I only started with five individuals, I didn't know how many were female, how many were male, how long this would take to build. But we have quite a few, I was very surprised. And once I moved them in, gave them a little spray and some food, they started to sort of move about. Now I will say this species does interest me, but I will say they are slower to breed, they're more expensive to buy initially, and you don't see them particularly often, but I just think they're absolutely adorable and they're pretty easy to care for. 
And finally, we have my giant canyon isopods. Now, these guys needed an upgrade because they're a pretty big species and they're breeding fairly well. I only started out about 10 individuals and that wasn't too long ago. So this colony is still fairly small, but the population is picking up. Now, I think these guys are cool in the sense that I've heard they do well in arid setups. And of course, I have four leopard geckos. They need custodians. This could be a game changer. But, um, I will say, visually they're not that interesting, they blend into the background pretty well, they hide away a lot, so if it works in an arid tank that could be a game changer for leopard gecko owners, but interest wise I wouldn't say visually they're particularly interesting. So yeah, that's all my enclosures upgraded, apart from the giant orange isopods. I did just want to give a quick shout out to a channel called Supreme Gecko. Now, despite the name, his channel is actually mainly about isopods. I actually think I've been subscribed to this channel for years, but it's only in the last few years he's really been consistently uploading about isopods. Now, he didn't ask me to give it a shout out. I don't even know if he knows who I am, but I actually just prefer to give genuine shout outs to channels I actually watch. But yeah, he has an amazing selection of isopods, some great advice, so I'll leave his channel link below if you want to check him out. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you to Royal Match for sponsoring. Uh, make sure you download that game. It is free and it helps support this channel. But thank you for watching and goodbye.